In this video, I'm going to show you how to style a button using the newest design trend, pneumorphism. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoy this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of video you would like to see next. Pneumorphism is a design trend that came out in early 2020. It basically represents the new skeuomorphism design. And skeuomorphism was a design trend that made UI elements appear like the elements in real life. For example, the highlights, shadows, and textures of objects would actually resemble what they look like in real life. Pneumorphism does have its own spin to it, so I'm going to show you how to create a button in this style using only HTML and CSS. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project, and right now I just have a header tag that has a link to the font that I'm going to use, and then some body tags. And in the body tag, I'm just going to place a button, and I'll just give it a call to action in the center. For this class, I'm just going to write new. So jumping into the CSS, first I'm going to declare certain variables that we'll use later on in the project. So I'm writing root, and then in root, I'm just going to declare some color variables. Next, I'm just going to apply some global styling. So I'm going to set the margin and padding to zero, and also a box sizing of border box. Then I'm going to set certain values for the body. First, I'm going to set a background color, and the background color will be that medium color that I defined earlier. Then I'm going to use grid to display the elements on the page. If you're new to grid, I have a whole tutorial that goes over the basics of it, so I'll link that video in the description below. So first, I'm just writing display grid, and then I'm justifying the content in the center, and then aligning the items in the center, so I know it will definitely be in the center of the screen. And I'm also making the height 100% of the viewport height. Next, I'm going to add some styling to this button. In the HTML, we call the class of this button new, spelled like the new morphism kind of way. So I'm just referencing that class and then giving it a different width and height. I'm going to increase the font size considerably. I'm going to give it a border radius. And I want to remove the default properties of this button, so I'm going to write border none and outline none. Next, I want the actual color of this button to match the background. I'm just going to call that background color and set it to that medium color. And now it looks like you can't even see it anymore because it perfectly blends into the background. Next, to add some actual styling to this, I'm going to add a box shadow, and that is really what is going to give it that new morphism kind of look. So the way that I'm going to do this initially is I'm going to set a highlight in the top left area and then a shadow in the bottom right. So I'm writing negative five pixels and then negative five pixels as in, in the X and Y direction. And then I'm writing a blur. And then I'm going to set the color of that. So I don't want that to obviously be black, which is the default. Instead, I want that to be the highlight. So I'm going to reference that light color that we had as the variable at the top. Now we have the highlight completed, but now I'm going to want to add a shadow on this opposite end. So I'm adding a comma and then adding a value for the shadow. So I'm writing five pixels, five pixels, 10 pixels, and then adding the dark variable that we added earlier. And there we go. Now we have something that looks like pneumorphism. I'm just going to add a little bit of styling to this. So I have a font family that I mentioned I have in the header. I'm just going to apply that here. I'm going to add a different color to it so it more closely resembles the UI. But now we have a button in the new morphism style. I've seen some other instances of this where it has different kind of shadow effects to look like it's actually going in the page. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm going to duplicate this button and give it a new to class. 
So it goes to the default behavior and I'm just going to copy the first class that we created. And then I'm going to modify this one. So for this first example, we had a highlight shadow and then we had a darker shadow underneath. So for this other example, I'm going to show you how to add inset shadows. So to actually add an inset shadow, it's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to go to where we have these box shadows defined. And then I'm going to write inset. And then I'm going to place where and what color we want the shadow to be. So first I'm going to write negative five pixels, negative five pixels, 10 pixels. And as you can see, this is the shadow over here. So we actually want it to be reversed for the inset. I want a lighter shadow at the bottom and a darker shadow on the top. So this one will have this light variable property. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it. And now it's a lighter shadow over here. I'm going to do the same thing, but make it for the dark shadow at the top. So again, I'm writing inset here. It will be positive five pixels by positive five pixels. And instead of it being a light variable, it will be the dark variable. Now using this inset shadow, this has a completely different look than this kind of button. Pneumorphism can be rather subtle. So if you are going to add this effect to your website, I really recommend adding hover states, active states, and focus states. So that way the element pops a little bit more when the user is on it. So these are two different ways that you can use pneumorphism. The first one on the top only has external shadows, a highlight at the top, and then a darker shadow at the bottom. And the other one includes the highlight and the shadow, but also includes some inset shadows to have a different effect. So there you go. That's two ways that you can apply the pneumorphism trend to a button using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.